What's going on internet? IG here again today, and today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts about the new Ubuntu releases, Ubuntu 15.04 and all of their variants. So as most of you would know by now, Ubuntu 15.4 is out. It's been out for a little while, and uh, and to be honest, I've been a little bit dubious about upgrading and trying it out. Now, as per usual, I download the ISOs and I use them in VirtualBox for a bit, and then I try and install them on an external hard drive so I can use it kind of as my secondary operating system to test it out. Well, to be honest, I've been trying to find an excuse to do a full video review like I did for my 14.04 .04 video a year ago. But I've got to be completely honest with you, there's really not a whole bunch of change that would make and feel any different from the Ubuntu 14.04 review that I did last year. Um, to be honest, there's, I mean, yes, there are changes on the back end, but it's so incremental and so barely noticeable that I don't think it really warrants the amount of time and effort that it takes to build a quality video review. And that's what I want to provide for you guys. So I thought I would do a, something a little bit different and just share my overall thoughts and opinions about Ubuntu 15.04 in my experience and also about some of the derivatives. Because to be honest, I actually think the derivatives have got more exciting stuff going on right now than what Ubuntu itself does. Does. Obviously, Ubuntu is now pegging itself out for feature improvements between long-term support releases, which I think is a great strategy, as it's just too hard to com constantly be implementing features into an OS that is constantly evolving every six months. Having said all that, for those of you who aren't aware, there are a couple of changes in Ubuntu 15.04, and most of those you probably would have heard from other YouTubers by now, such as the change from Upstart to System D, also the upgrade to Unity 7.3, which basically just gives a few little tweaks uh, and the interim here before we go over to Unity 8, and the idea with Unity 7.3 is basically locally integrated menus. Um, you can now set those to display by default all the time. Uh, so basically we're just sort of going back to what uh, GNOME used to be in the GNOME 2.x series. The rest of it is all pretty much just number revisions. You've got a latest version of Compiz, you've got the latest version of the Ubuntu Linux kernel. Basically, it's not quite the latest version of the Linux kernel as available at the time of the release, but it's their own patch version, so it'll work well with what they have developed thus far. And obviously, you've got the latest versions of all the applications, such as LibreOffice 4.4, Firefox 37, Thunderbird 31.6, Shotwell 0.20.2, and Nautilus and the GNOME stack, mostly based on GNOME 3.14. Obviously, we're now up to GNOME 3.16, I believe. So obviously there's still a little ways to go there in terms of uh, getting a, a, an Ubuntu release that coincides with a GNOME release. Probably it's never going to happen just because they're on different schedules. So if we were to move on past Ubuntu 15.04 and what it's trying to do, we would land on Kubuntu. Now Kubuntu is a distribution that I am much more excited about. Why? Because they have introduced Plasma 5 as the default desktop environment for Kubuntu. Now, don't get me wrong, Plasma 5 is amazing. In my opinion, it is much more thoughtfully designed and laid out for a modern desktop uh, than what some other directions of other distributions and even operating systems have been going recently. I'm very impressed with Plasma 5 and Plasma 5.2 being default in Kubuntu 15.04. Um, but I guess my thoughts on the matter are just that it's just that little tiny bit too buggy at this point, at least in my experience, and also the fact that some of the widgets aren't backwards compatible. So for those of you who are hardcore KDE fans, you might be left in the lurch here because some of your favorite widgets and favorite, ex favorite extensions might not work you the way that you want them to. Having said all that, I would be much more excited about running Kubuntu on my on my laptop as my go-to OS than I probably would the latest release of Ubuntu. Um, having said that, I'm still running Unity and I'm still running Ubuntu, but that's because this is my production system. This is the one that I go to. This is the one that I never want to have any issues with. I just want to be able to use it and uh, and let it and let it just do its thing without breaking or anything like that. Now, I don't, I'm not quite at that level of trust yet with Kubuntu. I've tried it out and I've been trialing it for the last couple of weeks, um, but it's just not quite there yet. Hence, why I haven't really been able to give you a full proper review of me sitting down and using this operating system for, you know, a week or two at a time. 
And I know this video is getting longer and longer and a bit ranty, but I wanted to let you guys into what is going on in, in terms of how I see the latest releases of Ubuntu. Because obviously, I in the past I have released a video review for almost all of the major Ubuntu releases, but since Ubuntu 14.04 there really hasn't been that much innovation on Ubuntu itself for me to keep interested and, uh, and I guess keep bringing video content that it's essentially going to be repeating the same thing that I said last year. Um, but having said that with Kubuntu and also the Ubuntu GNOME edition and also the Ubuntu, the new Ubuntu Mate edition or Mate edition, oh my goodness, this is where the stuff is at. Um, this is where I believe the, the, the miles, the milestones are being gained. And this is where I believe most of the Linux community is more excited about. Um, Ubuntu Mate has uh, officially been accepted into the Ubuntu family with canonical support. And, uh, and obviously 15.04 is the first time that it's been released as an official member of the Ubuntu family. Kubuntu, like I said, absolutely rocking it with the Plasma 5 desktop. Almost there in my opinion. It looks amazing, it functions amazing, but there's just a little bit of extra customization, stability, and uh, little features that I'd love to see in Kubuntu in Plasma 5 before I would fully switch over, but I'm that close. Uh, Ubuntu GNOME is doing its thing with the latest version being 3.14, uh, but I believe 3.16 is available through a backport. Uh, Ubuntu hasn't changed too much. Uh, it obviously is preparing for a new desktop environment called LXQT, um, which is going to be based on a more QT desktop environment. That's obviously in an effort to achieve a little bit more customization ability than what LXDE has had in the past. And finally, you have Zubuntu, which, oh my goodness, Zubuntu and the XFC desktop uh, with 4.12 is getting pretty amazing nowadays. So between all of these official respins of Ubuntu, which ones would you most like to see a full review of? That's my question to you. Let me know in the comments section below. Of course, we're going to keep going with the best of series. Coming up in the next video, we have the best email client that is available on the Linux desktop. But I just wanted to let you guys know what I think about the new Ubuntu 15.04 releases. And just to let you know that by and large, I'm not really interested in doing a, a full video review of Ubuntu 15.04, but I would definitely be curious about exploring these other ones such as Ubuntu Mate or Kubuntu or possibly even Zubuntu in a future video. So let me know what you think in the comments below. That will be all from me this time guys and I will see you in the very next video which will be another episode in the best of series. I'll catch you later guys.